Mary Magdalene. Ada Lovelace. Edmonia Lewis. Wu Zetan. These are the names of powerful women in history. They represent pillars of art, science, religion, and politics. Some of you may have known these names, but many of you probably didn't. And even if the name is recognized, a full understanding of these women's stories and countless other women's stories is almost impossible to uncover. It is a calculated tragedy and one that has left us imbalanced and ill-equipped for the future because you can't be what you can't see. When young boys and young girls learn history, they see something different. Young boys see a plethora of men, people who look like them, who've crusaded and conquered and created and constructed the world we live in now. Young girls just see an absence. It isn't that women can't lead or that they haven't led. It's that we are unfamiliar with the story of female leadership. How can we as women, as people, be truly powerful if we do not have access to our full human history? There are secrets that belong to you, that you have a right to. There are stories that have been robbed from you that you can and should demand to have back. There has been a genocide of female voices, and it has to stop. Stories are not to be underestimated. They are the things that carry us forward. They tell us who we are, how we got here, and how to manage the unpredictability of the future. Stories are unique to the human experience. They are entangled with our evolution, and there are blank pages in our history that are bright white and scorching hot. Those blank pages represent the space were the tales of the women who lived and loved and breathed and gave birth to all of us should be. But the vast majority of these are missing. Because patriarchy has mastered the art of the edit, the power of silencing. If we want to change our future, we have to disrupt the stories that shape our lives. We have to do a deep dive into the female narrative and to the female perspective and resurrect so much that has been hidden from us and go out there and create stories about women who are currently shaping our future. This is our goal and the mission of our company. We are a female-founded media company creating content for, by, and about women. The thing is, we are two women. And we met a few years ago at a women's conference that was dedicated to telling female stories and what's more interesting still is that Cassie and I have backgrounds in media and communications. But even so, we found ourselves completely blown away by the power of female narratives. We felt a sense of reckoning and this deep desire to reclaim feminism as a rallying cry of togetherness and equality. So we left our jobs and we built our company based on these four feminist values. One, feminist issues do not just belong to women. They belong to people as a collective, and men are an integral part of this community. Feminism is not a movement based on separation, competition, or comparison. Rather, it is all things inclusive, celebratory, and desirable. Inherently female attributes are essential to moving power, progress, and the entire leadership conversation forward. Feminism is not a sidebar discussion. It is central to all that's relevant from pop culture to politics to international development. We are currently traveling the world, filming our first series, documenting female revolutionaries, leaders, and activists. We wanted to go to the front lines where women were fighting for feminism. And what we found was that though female stories have been whitewashed from our memories, the ferocious spirit of women cannot be edited into non-existence. It is alive and it is well and exists all around us. Let us share with you the stories about the women we've met. Basma is a rebel and a leader who is fighting to protect women in Egypt from street harassment.
She is a 21-year-old veiled Muslim woman who is living in post-failed revolution Cairo, a place where street harassment is worse than anywhere else in the world. In fact, 99% of the women in Cairo report experiencing this harassment. There's this energy that permeates the air there with this idea that women do not have a right to public space. But this isn't stopping Basma. She defies stereotypes. She has created the first all-female motorcycle gang. And she is teaching other women how to ride as well. In her culture, it's taboo for women to ride motorcycles. But she has found a way, and she has created her own version of liberty. Pelin is a communications master. She's a top executive at Canal D, one of Turkey's largest TV networks. She is using her platform to empower and inspire women through soap operas. She finds stories, often written by women, always with strong female protagonists, that tackle taboo subjects like child marriage, divorce, and rape. The women watching her content see something of themselves reflected back to them in the characters on screen, and they feel empowered to break down barriers in their own culture. Her content is seen by more than 80 million people and distributed in more than 50 countries worldwide. Vanessa is a musical mastermind, and she is using her art to address sexual violence. She's the founder and CEO of Femtastic, which is a collective of female rappers and DJs in Sweden, a place we thought might feel a little like feminist heaven. But the thing is, even though there is progress, there isn't one country in the world that has crossed the finish line of parity. In Sweden, they don't have a consent law. This means that rape is not defined by a person saying no. Instead, it's defined by how violent the act is. So rapes are happening, and they're happening often, but the rapist is rarely charged because the current laws don't protect the victims. Vanessa is taking this issue on with incredible ingenuity. She has the number one female rapper in the country signed to her label, and together they are educating the masses, and they're encouraging young people to stand up and fight for justice and equality. Isabel is an athletic champion. She's a two-time Olympic fighter and one of Senegal's most successful wrestlers. Though you probably haven't heard her name because the media doesn't cover her story, which is ironic because Senegal is known for wrestling. <laughs> we kept seeing headline after headline about the phenomenon of wrestling in Senegal and how it had cultural and traditional roots. But they would only list the top male wrestlers, and we knew that women had to be involved. So we went to Senegal, and we met with Isabel in her hometown, and what we found there was a leader amongst leaders. She was using the influence of the sport to assume a real position of authority and power in her hometown and in her country. She's also training other young women to become successful wrestlers and leaders. Her tenacity and resiliency makes her a fighter in every sense of the word. Nina is a warrior woman. She is born from a lineage of Pachamama-worshipping Amazonian women who are fighting to protect their home and our environment. Nina is fighting against big oil. She's trying to keep this natural resource in the ground for all of us. Nina is a child of the Ecuadorian rainforest, but she's also a fierce feminist and activist and such a force to be reckoned with. She travels all over the world participating in marches and speaking at conferences to raise awareness about this issue. And when she's at home, she rallies together groups of young people to protest against big oil coming in and taking what isn't theirs to take. Maki is a fearless soul fighting for gender recognition. She's a trans woman who is leaping over hurdle after hurdle for her right to be identified as female, both legally and socially, in her home country, the Philippines. She's using established platforms like beauty pageants and creating new avenues through online campaigns and her groundbreaking dating site to lift the voices of one of the most marginalized and vulnerable people groups in the women's space. Her fight for feminism, femininity, and her right to be called female is moving mountains and in making it clear 
that trans women's rights are women's rights. Cassidy and I have been enormously impacted by these stories. They've had a tremendous effect on us. We are so excited for our series to come out, but for now, we'd love to show you just a little clip of what we've been experiencing. We wanted to come and see what life is like here for women and how they're pushing the envelope forward and being innovative. I think most people, especially outside of Egypt, they can't understand. They need to be education in gender equality. Because wrestling is part of our culture. Girls from like age three start wrestling and have that confidence building effect their entire life. It affects the decisions that women make every day. They are afraid to feel the change. All these excuses are related to women's image in society. They know what they're doing. They're proud of what they've created. The parties, the events, it's where we inspire other to like, I want to do that. Women who seem ordinary and then are just possessed by this extraordinary strength. <laughs> These women's stories are just drops in the ocean but the culmination of these drops is an ocean unto itself. We can't do it alone. There is an abundance here that is available to you. If we really want to change the future, if we really want to shift the balance, we have to start talking to the women. This powerful and disruptive tool is so simple. All you need is willingness to listen and the ambition to amplify the female voice. Now is the time. Thank you. Thank you.